Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to worship as we come to worship at Christ, our newborn King, our Savior among us, a love come down. Grateful that you are here worshiping with us this Christmas Eve. I invite you to follow along in your bulletin as we join in worship, particularly at the beginning as we begin with our confession and forgiveness. All of the words are in your bulletin. Uh, communion, everyone is welcome to uh, receive a communion here at St. Philip. Uh, we'll, uh, it'll be by intinction, which means we'll be standing here. You'll receive the bread and dip it into uh, uh, either the uh, silver chalice of uh, wine or ceramic chalice of grape juice. I'll remind you of that later. And uh, But all are welcome to come and join us. If uh, you don't want to receive communion or your kids don't receive and you uh, want them to come up and receive a blessing, just have them cross their arms and we'll know to give them a blessing. At the end of the service, and the, within that, the ushers are going to guide you uh, all on where to go and when to go and all of that. Uh, after, at the, towards the end of the service, we'll be doing our candle lighting as well. So if you uh, have not gotten a candle, uh, let's see. They're helping people sit. Make sure you grab one. Actually, uh, Galen's got a uh, candle. So if you don't have a candle and you want one, raise your hand. Our ushers uh, will uh, help make sure you've got a candle as well. And we'll give you instructions with that later. Uh, otherwise, uh, glad that you are here. We uh, will continue uh, uh, worship on uh, Sundays uh, as we uh, come forward at New Year's Eve and beyond, uh, 9 a.m. and then Sunday school at 10.15 uh, but we are glad that you are here to worship uh, Christ, our newborn King, with us. Invite you to stand as you are able. Say hello to those who are around you. Uh, wish them a Merry Christmas uh, as we begin worship. I invite you to turn towards the back of the sanctuary and our baptismal font for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Word made flesh, our life and our salvation. Amen. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, let us confess our sin. Let's take a time of silence for reflection. God of life, you promise good news of great joy for all people. Call us to be messengers of your peace. 
We confess that too often we hoard our, our resources and our security. We nurture conflict and build barriers. We neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation. Have mercy on us. Where we are self-centered, open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Cynical, restore our trust. Renew us with your grace and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. Amen. Hear the good news. We are children of God and heirs of God's promises through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus, we are forgiven and redeemed. Sing for joy, for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God. Amen. Today, Christ is born. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you now to turn towards the front of the sanctuary as we have our readings and our lighting of the Advent wreath. Today we celebrate Christmas Eve. The day we have waited for and prepared for is finally here. Today we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. As we waited for this day, we lit four candles. The first candle is the prophecy candle. The second candle is the Bethlehem candle. The third candle is the shepherd's candle. The fourth candle is the angel's candle. Today on Christmas, we light the center white candle. This candle represents Jesus. When we light this candle, we remember Jesus' birth. Our waiting has ended. Verse 11, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. When we look at the center candle, we remember that Jesus is the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. God sent Jesus to give hope, peace, joy, and love to all people. Far away from Bethlehem, wise men saw a star in the sky. They remind us that the gift of Jesus was not just for the people in one place, but for all people. Matthew, Matthew 2, verses 1 through 2. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him.
Matthew 2, verses 10 and 11. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down to worship him. What they opened, they that then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. God used a star to guide the wise men to Jesus. God has guided us to the true meaning of Christmas during Advent. God has come into the world in Jesus Christ to be with us so that we will experience God's hope, joy, love, and peace. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus for all people. On this Christmas Eve, help us remember and rejoice again because Jesus was born. Help us live every day remembering your love and care and showing that love and care to others. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the second reading is from Titus chapter 2. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all of the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, inviting children that want to come forward to have a children's conversation uh, to come right down here with me. Well, Merry Christmas. Do you guys like celebrating Christmas? Yeah. Do you like the presents? Do you like giving them? Good answer. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, we come to worship on Christmas Eve, hearing and singing these great songs and carols and hymns all about who? Jesus, right? Yeah, the birth of Jesus, exactly. So Jesus is God's son, right? And we say that Jesus is the word of God, which meant that Jesus was with God all the way at creation. We just didn't consider him to be Jesus. But now uh, God has sent Jesus to us, among us, in the form of a baby. How special is that? So one of the greatest things about this story is really that it's a kind of a love story, right? It's uh, God's love for us, that God would send uh, Jesus to us. So it's a great story of being able to hear of God's love and how God is present with us and how God reveals God's self and God's love to us in so many different ways. In our reading that I just read, we heard of shepherds. You know what shepherds watch over? Sheep. They watch over sheep. Yeah. So they're in their fields. They got to watch their sheep all day and all night. So they're in the dark, and there's probably stars in the sky. And the next thing they know, there's an angel showing the glory of God all around them. Do you think they were excited? 
Not at first. They were scared at first, right? I think I'd be scared too if an angel just kind of appeared out of the darkness outside, right? Well, the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. Not just good news, but of great joy for all people. That Jesus, their Savior, the Messiah, the Lord, had been born. So that's the great story that we hear. And it, it starts at the birth of a baby. And that's the great thing we can celebrate today is the birth of baby Jesus. And it's kind of the foundation, the start of our faith, the start of our lives as we grow in our faith, as we learn more about God's love. It starts right here with Christmas, with the birth of Jesus. Will you guys pray with me? Dear God, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, that you love us so much that you would send Jesus to us so that we can learn from him, so that we could uh, understand uh, more about you, and so that ultimately that you uh, would save us from uh, our sin, from our troubles. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for being with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas. You guys can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So 20 years ago, this movie first came out, Finding Nemo. How many of you have seen Finding Nemo? Who would have guessed that it would have come out 20 years ago? No, I couldn't believe it either. But if you remember the movie Finding Nemo, it's really kind of a love story between the father and his son, hearing how much the, or how all of the things that a father would do to find his son. What begins with the sacrificial love of Nemo's mother to start. Now they've got rules as Nemo grows up and who he is and what he can do and how far he can swim in the ocean. And the number one rule is don't swim past, anyone know? The reef. So what does Nemo do? He's got to be a teenager at this point. Pushing his limits, right? He swims past it, that reef. And he says, don't go any further. Don't touch that boat. And he hits it with his fin, right? Next thing he knows, he's being scooped up by one of those divers, and uh, Nemo's father is devastated, right? He's going to do everything that he can to go find his son and to save him so that he can have him back. Well, Nemo ultimately is taken into, uh, sold to a dentist office where he's in the fish tank of this dentist office where the niece, Darla, sorry, Darla's, loves to torture fish, Right? So Nemo knew that he had to get out of that fish tank, and he knew that he needed to get back to that ocean. Well, within that story, Nemo's father does everything. He's swimming, he's searching the whole ocean, he's trying to follow that boat, and he runs into Dory. Gotta love Dory. They even created a movie after her. And so uh, Dory helps him to try and find this. And next thing you know, all of the fish and all of the birds uh, hear of this story of Nemo's father trying to find him. And they find him and are trying to reunite them. Well, Nemo's got to get out of that tank. And so he pretty much dives himself out of that tank so he can go down a drain that leads back to the ocean. Dory helps them to be able to reunite again. But what a love story it is when you really think about it. Throughout uh, the whole uh, narrative uh, of that movie, of what that father would do to find his son. Well, great imagery for us, for us today on this Christmas Eve, as God would do anything to help find uh, his children, to help uh, find uh, us, the children of God. Well, many of us that know the phrase uh, faith, hope, and love it comes from 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three, 
and the greatest of these is love. Well, if you notice by my sermon title, I actually do it the opposite, love, hope, and faith, because I think it has to do that these are God, through that God is giving us his love, God is giving us hope, God is giving us faith, which then leads us to have faith, hope, and love. But we have to start at the very beginning. So we start with love. We hear of uh, God's love for us. It's what surrounds us in our Christmas Eve worship this day, surrounds us with God's love. That it's out of God's love for us that he would send his son Jesus to us. It's out of God's love for us that uh, Jesus would teach us about the Father, teach us how to live, and ultimately sacrifice himself so that we may have life, to be able to have eternal life with God forever, because God wants us to be with him in heaven forever. Well, within this story of the nativity, we experience and see love as well. Joseph's love for Mary, even though she becomes pregnant and going through this crazy thing and what society thinks of them, Joseph sticks around out of his love for Mary. I love this figure in our nativity. Because as Mary kind of crossing her arms uh, over her chest, over her heart, as she's looking down at her newborn son, the love that she has for her newborn son, the love that she has for God, the love that God has for us. Well, all of this leads us then to have hope. It is God who gives us hope through Christ, through God's presence among us, that we know and have that hope that God's love will never end. God's love will always be with us. There's even hope for the shepherds, some of the lowest people who are out in the fields, that the angel has come and visited the shepherds. In that dark sky, in that dark at night, that the angel has shown the glory of God around them and brings them hope. The Jews, the Israelites, had been waiting at centuries for their Messiah to come. And that hope has finally been fulfilled that Jesus has been born among them. And they hear this message from the angels that the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord has been born among them in Bethlehem, the city of David. We all need hope. God gives us hope as well through the promise of the Holy Spirit that we receive in baptism. It gives us hope to know that God is with us always. No matter what's going on in our world, no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what our health is or our relationships look like or how much we're struggling or whether we go to church or not, to know that God loves us and we have that hope. That hope that then comes from God in the form of the baby then gives us faith. Gives us faith to know that God is real. That God has come in human form. That God has revealed God's self to the people. Those messages, those stories that pass down to us. And for us, that's the foundation of our faith. As Christians, we uh, kind of start here with the birth of Jesus. Now we'd start with the Old Testament and all the Israelites and all that God has done. But for many, the start is here with the birth of Christ. And we have that foundation of faith. So important, one, for ourselves, but two, for our kids as well, right? having them to be able to have that foundation of faith, to know who God is, to know that God loves them, and to be able to come here on Christmas Eve and throughout the year to be able to worship this God 
who has come down to us. This God who uh, provides uh, us with hope. This God who loves us so much. That this is what our faith continues to grow upon as we hear this story of the birth of Jesus. To hear God's love for us. To hear God's love uh, come down uh, among us. So then, I've been not missing making those. <laughs> so for us, we have uh, that faith, it, we have uh, that hope, and we have uh, that love because of God's love for us, because of that hope that God gives us, because of that faith that God gives us as well. So as we go up about to our Christmas, May we be reminded of God's love for us, that God won't let us go. Just like Nemo's father wouldn't let him go, he sought him and sought him until he would find him. God is here among you and seeking each and every one of us each and every day. So Merry Christmas, and may you have that faith, hope, and love embedded in your life throughout your life each and every day as we begin this new year as well. Praise be to God for God's love and the birth of Jesus this day. Amen. Let us stand and join in singing our hymn of the day, O Come All Ye Faithful.
trusting in God's good news of great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world God loves. Glory to you, God, for the song of the angels. Proclaim church a joyful song to sing that we bring the good news of peace and salvation to all people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, for the child born to us who establishes a kingdom of justice and mercy. We thank you for all those who work to provide afford affordable housing, especially our partners in ministry Habitat for Humanity. We pray for all the volunteers and staff working on the current builds in Augustana and Mountain View. Grant them weather and health that enables them to work on the homes throughout the winter. We praise you for how you have provided through the current gingerbread fundraiser. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, for Mary's loving care. Lead us to tend to one another in time of need. Share the comfort of your presence with all people tonight who are alone or separated from loved ones due to estrangement or illness, especially Mary, Nancy, Flo, Mark and his family, Diane, Juanita, Jillian, Carolyn Endicott, Tom, Carolyn Smith, Bob, Phyllis, our homebound members, and those whom we hold in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, for the stars that shine in the, the night. Help us to be a light to others in times of need. We give thanks for the ministry of our sharing with Sheridan Food Pantry and the ways we provide light with meals and hope. We pray for continued growth and establishing more relationships with the Sheridan community and our Spanish neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Abide with us, O oh God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. You may be seated as we receive our offering. Uh, our way of offering it is a great way for us to be able to thank God uh, with uh, giving back uh, to God for God's blessings and uh, for all that God has done for us. So we thank you for your offerings uh, that you give to St. Philip, to God through St. Philip.
God of abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace poured out in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and the mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith that to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all of the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In this bread and in this wine, Christ comes among us, pouring out his love upon us. Come, receive, for all are welcome. You may be seated. Uh, again, uh, we'll be serving in tinction, uh, uh, or communion by intinction uh, here in front. Uh, follow the guidance of our ushers. You'll receive the bread and dip it into our silver chalice of wine or a ceramic chalice of grape juice as we receive our Lord and Savior together. If you took one of the communion cups and want to receive communion uh, uh, in your chair or your pew and uh, invite those to, at home to get out their communion as well, and you'll receive communion now. This is the body of Christ given for you. <clears throat> This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This time I invite you to get out your candles as uh, we uh, light the candle, spread the light of Christ. And once all of our candles are lit, we'll begin uh, with singing at Silent Night. One of you turn off the narthex lights once all the candles are lit.
Lift high the torch. You did not light its glow. T'was given you uh, by other hands, you know. I think it started down the pathway bright. The day the maker said, let there be light. And he once said, who hung on Calvary's tree, you are the light of the world. Go shine for me. Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace and proclaim the good news. Speak to God. God. 